This week on Ignition. We go to Italy to find out what you can do with a Lamborghini in 24 hours. We're at the Nardo Ring, which is one of the fastest test circuits in the world, and we happen to have an Aventador, which is the fastest and most powerful Lamborghini ever produced. We only have 24 hours to drive it. I wonder where we should start. <laughs> that is fantastic. Let's start with acceleration. So here's how you do an acceleration run in a Lamborghini Aventador. You select course on the dash here, toggle stability control so it's off, left foot on the brake, right foot slams the gas, and you let go of the brake. Shifts are fantastic. 60, 2.8 seconds. They just knock you in the back. The quarter mile, 10.6 seconds at 133 miles an hour. It'll keep pulling all the way to 217, but unfortunately, Lamborghini won't allow us to do that here at Nardo. All right, now we're cruising at 60 miles an hour. We're gonna find out how well this thing stops. Quite well, 100 feet from 60 is our best stop. So with acceleration and braking done, let's find out how well this thing handles. We're on a 150 meter skid pad and doing about 120 kilometers an hour. And oh, wow, this thing is so controllable. I never thought I'd drive a V12 mid-engine Lamborghini and be able to counter steer it around a skid pad. This is, this is fun. You can control the angle of the car through the steering or the throttle. It just does whatever you want it to. So we got the test data, but that clock is still ticking. We have the entire southern peninsula of Italy to explore. Let's cause some mayhem. Lamborghinis aren't just cars. They're experiences. Even getting into one is pure theater. Starting one? It's like firing an intercontinental ballistic missile. And driving one? Life changing. The Aventador is a car of extremes. It has 3.5 feet width worth of rubber and 691 horsepower to drive them through. The resulting acceleration is staggering. This car is as fast as 60 miles an hour as a Bugatti Veyron. The crazy thing is, Lamborghini didn't even do that on purpose. Acceleration wasn't even their main priority. Instead, accessibility was. They tried to make this the most accessible V12 mid-engine Lamborghini ever. I think they've accomplished that. They've also adapted new technologies. The passenger tub, the roof, carbon fiber. Way more lightweight than the outgoing Murcielago. And on the inside, in the interior, you get pieces from Volkswagen Audi. The infotainment system is actually based on Audi's MMI software. Now, some people will complain about that. I won't because I know it'll work every time. For as advanced as the event store seems, there's still some old school technology. The seven speed automatic isn't a dual clutch. It's an automated manual. And though it's lighter than a dual clutch, it's a little bit clunky at low speeds and around town. Of course, it smooths way out at high speeds. The suspension is relatively simple too. It's just Olin shocks at all four corners actuated by push rods. They're completely non-adjustable, but fortunately Lamborghini has chosen a pretty good setting. But enough about the details. How is the Aventura drive on a curvy Italian road? Wonderful. The steering is precise. It tells you exactly what you need to know about the road. There's just an immense amount of grip through these super wide tires. And the best bit is that 691 horsepower V12 behind your back. At any moment, it's just full speed ahead. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I had a poster of the Countach on my wall. It was a magnificent thing, a concoction of extravagance, stupidity, and power. It was an aspiration, a concept, something that existed only at the end of a rainbow. The Aventador is that car realized. It makes me carry the same lust. When I'm driving it, I want to get out and look at it. And when I'm looking at it, I want to get back in and drive it more. 
This is the car that deserves to be on your kid's wall. This is the car that should be on all of our walls. Thank you.